We're in Dorset on a dawn till dusk adventure, looking for two creatures which are worms by name, but definitely not by nature. So, Zachary, what have slow worms and glow worms got in common? They're actually not worms. Exactly. We're going to find out where they get their wormy name now. First up, slow worms, which are in fact lizards. So we hope to find some in this heathland at RSPB Arn. It's home to all six native British reptiles, so we should be in luck. Howard Inns is the wildlife warden here. We're obviously looking for slow worms today, but what else can we find on this nature reserve? The two specialist species for, for heathlands are the smooth snake and the sand lizard, and they only live on heathlands. Obviously, most species people can't find in their back gardens, but slow worms is one that they can well, look Well, slow for. worms is the one that you will find in the garden. I mean, you find them right through the British Isles, nice compost heap, perfect for, for slow worms. So that's exactly where we're starting our search, the reserve's compost heap. Slowworms are completely harmless, but they're a protected species, so it's best not to touch unless you're experienced in doing so. And this one also has got a complete tail. Slowworms are called worms as they can shed their tail if attacked by a predator, leaving a worm like decoy. The tail keeps wriggling, keeps twitching the muscles. But the important part, the rest of the slowworm gets away, lives to fight another day. But if it does grow a tail, it's never quite as beautiful and long and elegant as this. We found the slow worm pretty easily, so we're heading out onto the reserve to see if we can find any other reptiles. And I can just make out the tail of a sand lizard. This one's cryptically camouflaged. That is an incredibly rare reptile. Howard has placed sheets of metal around the reserve to attract reptiles as they act like sunbeds to keep them warm. And there we have a nice smooth snake. Look at that. This is the rarest snake in the UK. It's not venomous, but they must only be handled if you have a licence like we do. Look at these beautiful black marks all the way down its body. Now, of course, this time of year, if she's a female, Howard, yeah, she's... she'll be pregnant. And you can see that. It's looking at you and its tongue's popping out. <laughs> time to pull it back where it's found it. Back. With the smooth snake back under its sunbed, we're moving along the coast to Dilston Country Park near Swanage in search of our second worm of the day. Well, this one should be easy to see in the slow worm because... It glows in the dark. It certainly does. Glowworms are beetles and best spotted when it's really dark. You should be able to see a little glowing green light. We spot a glimmer in the grass. There we go, isn't it amazing? Oh, so bright. This is a female. Unlike the male, she can't fly. And she's using her bioluminescent glow to stand out in the dark. She's only got about 10 days light before she runs out of energy. She's got a really limited time to try and catch a male and she'll lay eggs. So she is desperately searching for a male at the moment. As the night draws on... <gasps> Dad, look, another one! We spot another female. Zachary, you've got an eye for fighting these. <laughs> Glowworms have a worm-like body, hence their name. They're a rare, magical sight, and have long been the subject of myths and stories. In World War I, the infantrymen in the trenches would collect glowworms and put them in a jam jar so they could read at night. And even stories of glowworms lighting the way back along footpath edges just like this which is what this glow is doing, lining the way home back to your bed because it's well past your bedtime. <laughs> yeah. It's been a great adventure, successfully finding an array of enigmatic creatures.